What's going on guys and welcome back to LOI TV. Now today it is episode 9 of the LOI Transfer Show. It's been a couple of weeks since the last one now. I have been busy enough. It's that time of year with kind of college and I was away for a few days and stuff like that. So we're back with episode 9 today. Um, hope you guys are doing well and enjoying the Christmas period. A lot of business has been done for us to recap on in the last couple of weeks that we haven't touched on yet. So I hope you guys are ready for a good show. If you are new around here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and drop a like on this video. It means a lot. And guys, could you do me a huge favour and check out the description down below and click on our socials and follow us on all of them. We are really close to hitting a thousand followers on Instagram. And if you do that before the end of the year, we are going to be doing a huge giveaway in the new year. So yeah. Make sure to go over there, check out us on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, drop a like, a share, a retweet, everything is so appreciated. So yeah, um, nothing else to do but to jump right into the video. As always, going to start off in alphabetical order with Bohemians. And Bows have brought back fan favourite centre-back Dan Casey. He had a spell with Cork City last season, did okay there. And he's back now with Bohemians where he spent a year and a half before that. He actually scored, I think it was two goals in the Dublin Derby that started the season off two years ago and he'll be looking to do the same thing now after the fixtures were released. Bowers fans, Shamrock Rovers fans, what you make of the opening day? Are you confident with that game? It's going to be a huge one. I can't wait for it. The computer randomly generated that as the opening game of the season. But can Dan Casey replicate those two goals? We're going to have to wait till February to find out. In other news as well, Bohemians have re-signed Paddy Kirk and Michael Barker. I think they did need some defensive reinforcements. It did look like those two players were going to be leaving the club for a while. But now, Paddy Paddy Kirk has been brought back as um, he's probably going to be a backup to Anthony Breslin at left back. Michael Barker, similar story, back up to Cornwall Infinity at centre back. But two good um, backups and two good players because they have a lot of going to have a lot of games this season with the Europa League, the Cup, the League, challenging on all fronts. They're going to need a huge, like not a huge squad, but a big squad. And these players will add a lot of competition and competitiveness to it. Moving on to Cork City. Now they've had a lot of concerning departures that we're going to touch on um, with the future team is going to talk about but um, they have let go of Ty Ryan as well as these other departures that we will touch on later on but they have brought in a goalkeeper as a replacement his name's Liam Bossin he's a former Nottingham Forest and Anderlecht um, goalkeeper I think he's Belgian as well so who knows what he's going to be like he could be a very very good shot stopper so I'll have to wait and see how um, how that one plays out Cork City fans they were actually pretty pretty sad with Ty Ryan leaving the club he had a decent season last year for them and was one of the probably brighter players for them considering how bad of a season they had. So Cork City fans, if you're watching this, what do you think of the news that Ty Grine has left the club and you've brought Liam Bossin in? Moving on to Derry City, the team who have a European place for next season. They have replaced Greg Sloggett who left for Dundalk. They have brought in Connor Clifford who was released from St. Pat's. I think he's a good player. I think he's 28 now so he's kind of in the prime of his career. Good central midfielder. Apparently Paddy McCourt played a big role in him signing for Derry City. They have also been linked with Connor McCormack. He recently left Cork City. A very good midfielder. He has been referred to as a journeyman and a legendary central midfielder by certain sources on Twitter. Um, but no, he's a really, really good player, 29 as well. So he still has a lot of good years left in him. So those two would be a good signing for Derry, I think, in my opinion. Next up, the champions, Dundalk. Of course, they've bought in Sloggett and Patching already. And they have um, brought in more competition at left back with Dara Leahy joining the club from Bohemians. Very, very good signing. He was in the PFAI team of the season two years ago. Um, still a very young lad. He's only 21. Very, very good player. Um, Bohemians will feel his loss a lot. Obviously, Breslin has come in as a good replacement but Leahy is top class left back in the league will provide a lot of competition with Dane Massey there is rumours of Dane Massey leaving the club so that remains to be seen Darley he will provide a lot of competition at left back this season though if Dane Massey is to stay there the level of quality in Dundalk squads has grown bit by bit and uh, they're looking like an unstoppable force next up we have Finn Harps who I'm pretty concerned about for next season they have brought in Adrian Delap on loan from Derry City I think he's a winger so uh, don't mean really an awful lot about him but you add numbers to their squad which they do need they need a lot of players in the door and um, they've had a good few departures as I've mentioned in previous transfer shows so yeah Finn Harps um, probably struggling for numbers but they have brought in a winger next up we have Sligo Rovers who have brought in Will Seesmore they've brought him in from the US he looks like a decent player don't know an awful lot about him again so he could be one of those kind of Romeo Parks types where an unknown quality comes in and can perform really well at this level it's just a hard one to know so 
they're meant to be seen, but Liam Buckley is building a nice squad there, um, a lot of squad depth, and Sligo looks solid and ready to go again for next season. Next up we have St. Patrick's Athletic, and they continue their revolution this season, and they have brought in Shane Griffin, who was one of the players I was talking about as a concerning departure from Cork City. He's on his day, probably one of the best left-backs in the league. Him and Ian Birmingham competing for the left-back spot at St. Pat's next season will be a fascinating um, to see where who starts ahead of who. But it's a good rotation option, and he's a very, very good left full. There was rumours of him leaving the club to go abroad to England and the likes a couple of seasons ago. He's only 25 still, so he still has a lot of good years left in him, and St. Pat's will really feel the benefit of that this season, I feel. And Stephen O'Donnell is really, really building a top-class side there with lots of rumours of more quality coming in the door. Next up, we have Waterford, and they have tied down Alan Reynolds for next season again, but their big news story has been, of course, star player Zach Elbozetti leaving the squad. He has joined Lincoln City in League One. Good move for him. I think he'll probably get good first-team football ball over there in England deserves to move back really really good talent um, Lincoln City were recommended to make the signing by under 21 Ireland manager Stephen Kenny who has given rave reviews of him um, he looks like a top player and he will do very very well over there it's a shame to see him lead the league would have liked to have seen him join maybe a Shamrock Rovers or a Dundalk and see him really progress next season but so be it um, best of luck to him over in League 1 Waterford have moved to bring in two players I've seen Graeme Cummins has joined the club he's a striker I think everyone really knows about him at this stage he spent time with Cork City and Shamrock Rovers recently hasn't really been firing on all cylinders but I think a fresh move to Waterford where he'll be the main man up front I think he could really really thrive in that squad I think he does have a lot of ability he has played over in England before I think he's what 32 33 now but he's a big target man he's a difficult player on his day to deal with for centre backs he's a big unit and um, so I think I think he could be a really really shrewd signing one that goes under the radar and he could hit 10 maybe 15 goals next season I am worried about Waterford and I think a goal score like that could keep them away from any uh, kind of danger next season they've also moved to bring in a centre back Sam Bone has joined the club from Shamrock Rovers he was on loan at Waterford last season and he was okay uh, he's a young lad still so that could be a good move and they have they do need a lot of players in the door still so they're working on that but I think that's a good one but overall for Waterford fans it has to be a feeling of hurt I think the loss of elbows Eddie will really really be a big miss for them next season we are going to hop down into the first First division quickly starting off with Drogheda they have moved to bring in two players Richie O'Farrell who was at UCD last season he's only 18-19 played a lot of games in the Premier Division for UCD last season picking up a lot of experience obviously not winning a lot of games but he'll be able to bring that experience of the heartbreak from relegation and all that down into the first division with Drogheda and have a really really good season with them I think that's a good signing and um, they've also brought in a goalkeeper David Odumosu from Dundalk he's only 18-19 so he'll provide some competition between the sticks next up we have Galway you've brought in three impressive players who I think would all be capable of playing in the Premier Division first up winger Carlton Ubazenu or something like that I don't know how to really pronounce it apologies for that but he was with Dundalk previously he's only 21 really bright pacey winger to cause his team's problems I think that's a good signing for Galway next up Joshua Smith who spent time with uh, Fianna Harps last season impressed there um, it looks a good decent looked a decent player I'm surprised he didn't actually stay with Fianna Harps but Galway have secured his services for next season and finally Dean O'Halloran who has left Waterford I thought that was a surprising one to see him go as well but that's a good signing I think he'll do really well in the first division and lastly we have Longford Town who have moved to replace left back Anthony Breslin the best left back in the league in the first division last season um, it would be a huge loss of course but they have brought in Eric Obulu a 19 year old left back from Shamrock Rovers who looks like a hot prospect and that's a good signing for um, for Longford they did need a left back well guys there you have it the wrap up of the first division and premier division transfers rumours done deals everything really it's the first one back for a while we're going to have a lot more exciting things coming up in 2020 I'm going to look to get guests on and stuff it's kind of hard at the end of the year but next year um, I'm going to look to get a few people on the show if you have any recommendations for that let me know down in the comments below I hope you enjoyed the video guys if you want to stay up to date with all of our content we have lots of exciting things coming up in 2020 as well as this show continuing on lots of exciting things going down so if you want to stay up to date with every single one of them make sure to hit that subscribe button down below if you enjoyed this video guys please make sure to hit that like button it means a lot and shows your support for the channel I'm not too sure when the next video is coming out guys but I want to say I hope you all have a lovely Christmas we really appreciate all the support you've shown us over the last year it means a lot to us so yeah, have a good one and I will see you very soon.